Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Hassan Talks Podcast. This episode comes actually in a, a new series uh, that's uh, going to be a part of the podcast, which is basically Sudanese creators, where I'm going to be interviewing more Sudanese uh, uh, creators, uh, people who are, I believe they're brilliant, they have a lot of talents, and they've been showing their talents basically in the last few years. Um, the podcast uh, is going to be sort of a platform to hear their stories, to to you know, to dive deeper into whatever they are working on. And uh, I couldn't be happier to have the first guest of this series as a Sudanese creator. Uh, nobody's better to start with than uh, Darren Naim. Darren Naim is a Sudanese artist. Uh, that's uh, that's her. Uh, of course, if you're watching this episode, then you can see all the reactions. Uh, if you're listening, <laughs> then you're missing a lot. So Darren Naim is a Sudanese artist based in Spain. Uh, her brilliant piece of work has been out there for the last uh, few years, but uh, I got to 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 know her through the uh, book that was released last year, which is uh, Sudan Retold. So that book, if I'm not mistaken, included more than 30 Sudanese artists and creators uh, from the diaspora from all over the world, including Sudan itself, to present Sudan uh, in a very um, different way. You know, talking about the past and the present. And that was following the revolution that took place last year. So uh, Darren Naim is just an amazing person. I don't, I don't know what to add more than this, but we'll get to know her more uh, along the way, you know, through this uh, episode, through this podcast. So yeah, get ready, guys. So welcome, Darren Naim. Hello. Hola. Salam. <laughs> yeah. How are you, man? Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is uh, my first podcast ever in life. So, wow. yeah. I'm so honored. So, real now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm um, so happy also that you have chosen to do a little uh, episode, uh, some episodes or a little side of your podcast uh, des- uh, reserved for the artists. I think uh, there's a lot of art conversations needed, not just uh, visual art needed. So, I think it would be really interesting to also get to know some artists more through your podcast. Actually, that would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, that's, that's basically the idea, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yes, I was in Sudan Retold, and it did have more than 30 because it had 31 artists. Okay. <laughs> Quite accurate, okay. <laughs> it was really good. Like a lot of them, I do know a lot of them, most of them I've, I have met. Um, and, uh, and it was one of the best uh, projects of the last few years that I have been involved in, to be honest. It's the more... The more um, uh, efficient project, if you know what I mean. Like the, it's it's important to do projects, and we're always doing projects. Artists are like involved in, you know, have their fingers in a thousand cakes, yeah. but not all the cakes taste fantastic. You know <laughs> okay. what I mean? So um, this book actually it took three years, but it was, it's it's so it, it's like three years of hard work. And, you, have, and perfect. Right? you have the book with you, right now. Yes, I have it here, actually, of course. So that's, that's the book that Darren Aim is uh, referring to, Sudan yeah. Retold, yes. The Sudan Retold. Wow. Sudan written- and Muad. Yes. Ya Jama. Okay, that's why it took three years, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Here for language, but anyway, it's so beautiful. It's full color, beautiful print. It was designed by the local team, also Sudanese. So it's, it's just, it's wow. beautifully edited. It's just, it's just, it's gold, basically. Art. It's and- art. Yes, and Khaled Al Bay, who who is uh, this, the 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 guy who had the idea, you know Khaled Al Bay, of course. Of course. He yeah. um he just announced that he wants to do a part two, so that's super interesting. I mean, I don't think I'll be in that one too. I mean, I hope. I mean, if they want me, I'm there. <laughs> problem, but <laughs> you know, it'd be really good to just you know dig out some more people, see what's going on, keep talking about Sudan, keep to- talking about art. Yeah. Mixing, like you said, past and, and present, and, and also future. This is what I mean. This is for the future generations, really, to know what was happening now. Uh, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, we are living. We are living like uh, crucial parts of history that's t- taking place in Sudan, and I think it needs to be uh, documented in the best way possible. So for the future generations, you know, to be able to access it. Like I think in our cases, like we had a very little access of what happened in Sudan in the past decades you know and we just yeah. were told like specific parts of the history that's not really beneficial and we missed a lot so this is a very amazing project that you've been a part of in the last year yeah i think that there's so much about sudan that has not been archived um that even if we don't talk about art 
even if we talk just about you know maps um geography uh i don't know there's so many things that are not expressed on paper as data you know so um it's very important i think for art to be done but in it's difficult because nothing is being recorded so it's kind of yeah. like you have taken we have taken such a big job in a way to do so you know yeah 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 i think i think you're absolutely right since we're talking about uh yeah, sudan and all this kind of uh archived kind of projects let's let's go back uh, a few steps and talk about art which is your 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 field you know you've been you've been working in this you've been having your own projects your own uh online store as well and paintings and all this kind of stuff so if we go a little bit back and try to define the word art from your own perspective so the stage is yours i knew i knew difficult questions were coming okay so <laughs> <laughs> all right um Okay, so I'm just gonna give you like quick reactions to that question, and then we can go into the detail, I guess. But for me, art is life, and full stop, well, done. All <laughs> Very right. Very simple. <laughs> but not my life, life. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like the quick thing is like, yeah, art is everything. So let's just like not even talk about it. So let me give you an example of how I tend to go about explaining art when i'm asked <laughs> okay. by the way i've been asked this for years and years 15 years at least every year someone asks you and every year you give a different answer by the way <laughs> all right so let, let's get the new answer now <laughs> yeah so the new you're gonna get the new and improved answer in the 2020 edition of what is art by dara naim all right okay. art is a word like tree is a word which means if i say tree you know exactly what i'm talking about all right but if i look into tree i will find many branches, many things to study and look for and understand. And actually, if I went into detail and said, oh, I love tree. Okay, can, yeah. can you expand on that? Oh, I love these trees that grow here and require this care and look like these, and, and, you know, and it's, it's almost like, I think art is usually separated, but art is actually in the everyday. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so just like like all you know about trees is all you know about art you see what i mean you need to um, see art as something that you can actually uh, um kind of like learn about let's say or or right. or appreciate and when i say art is everything i mean mixing the color palette for your skin when you put your makeup on that's art i mean you know yeah. i don't think it's easy that's why uh, you know like well, i don't know or, or your I don't want to talk just about fashion or direct, clear things like clothes, but maybe, you know, in, in, in design, in architecture, in music, in everything, there is art. There is, there is, there is an artistic uh, form or um, appreciation needed to understand that uh, practice. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So art, however, is not the artist. That's for sure. So you're not art. That's what you're saying. No, I, I'm not art. <laughs> I mean, I'm art if the, for the, the creator, created this piece of art. Yes, I am an art then, you know, like, but yeah. not art. I, I am a human being. I am a human being on earth with my human problems. Art yeah. is the solution to all my problems. You see? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, a brilliant, that's a brilliant definition. But now if we, if we try to imply what happened this year, the pandemic and, you know, the social distancing, what happened the to the definition of art then? Does it change? Does it evolve? Oh, art, art that was my savior. Art has always been my savior. And every challenge that comes, I, I am amazed by how it's taking care of me. Like, it's my best friend. Like, it's, it's where I go when I'm happy, sad, you know, where, where I get my money from, where I get my identity from, where I can express what I actually want to say. It's almost like my microphone. It's my mic, you know? It's like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think the pandemic and all this actually actually benefited my work a lot if i'm honest i mean i love being in the studio i love being alone i find it hard to be alone because i feel the pressure that i have to be part of society sometimes and i have to be social and nice and care and, and all that stuff which i do okay but it's just effort when you have like a mission and and like you need it to be effective it's not a joke like i don't know um like i, I am a professional artist this is what i mean but i am not um 
exhibiting every month. I am not doing any of those things anymore because of Corona. But mm. that doesn't mean that I'm not the person I am. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a quite point, deep uh, kind of uh, definition now, or like you know, kind of understanding of art. And I think I think that represents art, art itself. Art is always. Uh, for so many people, and I include myself because I don't believe in an, an, an artist in any way, but I, I also struggle with understanding art. Like whenever I see a painting, it took, takes me a while to understand exactly what's the meaning behind this. But with time, I understood that you don't have to complicate yourself so much just to appreciate something that you don't understand. Sometimes you just take it as it is and enjoy the first impression of, of it, you know, and that's it. I think that's the first step towards giving yourself the freedom to look freely, I mean, you're almost judging yourself when you're looking at the art. If you're basically, thinking, oh, yeah, God, basically. you yeah. know, yeah, because but art is an is an object made to to criticize. I mean, it's, uh, it's not made for that purpose, but it's made to be shown and be seen. And when anything is seen, it is instantly criticized for its beauty, its value, its form, its shape, its materials, whatever we can talk about anything, and it's exactly the same. That's why I didn't want to separate art from the from life, you know, I feel like it's kind of the same way you rear, you sort out your problems in life, do the same thing with art, you know, like a lot of people talk about politics and they don't understand politics, but they talk about it. So why can't you do Basically, that with art? every like, Sudanese what? uncle out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, every, exactly. Or for example, um, I don't know, I'm not a football player, I'm not a basketball player, but I talk about like, you know, the NBA basketball games. I don't know. Like, do you see what I mean? Like, why do I feel like I understand something? I'm not even playing the game. I'm not even involved. So why do you feel comfortable with some subjects and some others not? And I think it's because art has been, has been, we have been tricked to think that if we do not understand art, we might even be stupid or dumb or, or, or like non, not intellectual or, yeah. or, you know, that's, that's, yeah, because I, I don't know, I don't know how this started, but it always like artists the, for the elite part of society, you know, you go to a museum, try art. The only so people who can afford art are the elite, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm talking art, I'm talking about the five meter painting, all right? And the only artist who can make a five meter painting in their house is the one who's going to get paid for it. Do you see what I mean? I think that's where it starts. I think people walk into a gallery with white walls, big spaces, lights, they pay the price, there's a catalog, everything is clean, people are quiet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the way we have been made to experience art has brought art to a very high type of standard, almost like it deserves a different type of respect. But remember, that painting on that wall can be on any wall, all right? It's just because yeah. they're presenting it to you with importance that you look back at yourself and you ask yourself, am I given this that importance? Yeah. I should be giving this that importance. So then you see a line on a canvas and you're like, why is a line on a canvas? Yeah, so what important? does this mean exactly? Well, that is why, because it needs to make you ask those questions. That's the reason. Art is there to ask you questions. Whether you ask for them, you get it, you don't, it, it that's, that's your problem. That's not the person's problem. It's not the art's problem. Yeah. Art doesn't insult uh, the viewer. Art needs the viewer, you know? If there's no viewer, there's no art. That's for sure. You know, it's... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I think it becomes difficult because we have been told, you know, oh my God, this is, oh, this guy, oh, you have to read this book to understand. Mm, just give yourself a chance. Just look at the piece. You like it, you like it, you understand it, you don't understand it. That, nothing, you're not being tested. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see exactly what you're saying here. For me, for somebody who's not an artist, uh, I kind of define art differently. And what I, what I say is, of course, this might be an insult to any artist out there. I'm sorry oh, in no. advance, but I'm saying anything, that's, <laughs> anything that looks beautiful for me is, is art. So if I decorate my room in, room in a specific way that makes me happy and comfortable, I say, oh, look at this art. Or like <laughs> if I cook something that tastes very good, so I'm like, this is a piece of art. So the definition of it is like very abstract, very wide. It's not just like defined in the, in the canvas or like the paintings. It's way bigger than that. Beauty, um, it's beauty. It's beauty, yeah, word, yeah. yeah. Right? So it's aesthetical. It's an aesthetic appreciation towards shape, form, size, etc. Yeah. But can I ask you a question, for example, in basis of your description? So when you make food, if it's beautifully cut and beautifully set and whatever, and it's like very well plate setting, 
Is it going to taste better than if it's all done no, in it a gonna, different... It's going to taste the same at the end. This is just like a presentation of it. Okay, so, so that's the question, right? Like, some people appreciate... They're in visual, they have learned to appreciate the things that give them happiness and pleasure. To appreciate that, which is beautiful in color, which your eyes are like, oh my God, this color conversation is so good. I want to look at it again. You know, like, mm. but that conversation again is in your head. You're not, so that's again, the art, the, the arrangement, the, the size, the colors, the space, the feeling is the art. That's what I'm telling you, art is life mm. because it, you can't uh, suppress it. Now yeah. the artist's job though, is to find art and, and observe it and, 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 and kind of like let the art speak. You see what I mean? So you're almost like the, the helper of art. You're, you're trying to let the, you're the vessel. The, the art is coming through and you need to get it out. And it's going to ask you questions first, like way before anybody else sees it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, see? I see? I see that. I see that. Am I getting too deep or like too? No, you, you are, but I think, I think it's necessary to be <laughs> talked about. We need this, like, uh, be, because like we, we as, you, as you've been saying that, We've been sometimes giving arts like in a place, uh, like, you know, very high in the society or whatever. And then people like are very afraid to talk about it because they feel like they're dumb and stuff. But I think we need to talk about stuff like this that redefine uh, art, also like uh, revisit the ideas that we have and the impressions we have of art and an artist. And so we can connect with this kind of stuff so we don't miss the beauty of life, you know, just because we don't understand something. Yes, exactly. For example, I feel like, uh, art, art has two, two sides, the art and the artist. This is, I keep saying that, okay? Yeah. Um, the artist is still a person, okay? Yeah. Like the dentist is still a person. People need to understand this, all right? Now, the dentist knows everything about teeth and the artist knows everything about whatever medium they have chosen or whatever, you know? But actually, they're not treated the same because we also were taught to respect dentists because it's a good mm, job. But but you're not allowed you're not allowed to respect an artist and, unless they're already like in the big like you know you're yeah. supposed to like do you see what I'm saying so there is both sides there is a side that tells you listen art is expensive it's elitist you either understand it or you're an idiot da 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 nah, nah, we 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 nah, da, 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 da. Yeah. Mm, rich people talking and then you have the everyday folk by the way artists are everyday folk they're supposed or, to be actually uh, everyday folk yeah right? and, and, and and these guys are constantly being crushed by, oh, did you make money with what you do? Is this even art? Did you sell it? Like, you know, or, or I don't know, or, or people, oh, artists are so disorganized. Oh, that's, she's an artist, forget it. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, it's yeah, like, yeah. so I think we, we, that's the artist, like you said, yeah, for me, when people criticize art, they're actually criticizing the artist because they're not in agreement with their creations or their actions or the words that they might speak. But, the art is non non challenged about that. You see, the art has nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It's just an artist here, and that's that's a completely personal problem that the society has with with these professionals. Anybody can, probably, yeah. Right? Anybody can make art, but not everybody can be an artist. That's for sure. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that's, when you that's actually a good way to to say it, I think. When you criticize art, question yourself: Are you criticizing art, or are you criticizing the person who you think made this? Because you probably don't even know what they look like, but you in your head. You're thinking of the person who made this in their studio. You don't even know what their studio looks like. You don't even know what paintings they did in the last 20 years. And of course, you don't know the story behind this. What was yeah. the idea behind this? It's just like I mean, a final, been... final step. And you understand it based on your own experiences. That's what you see. Yes. And, and the artist, the artist, one of the difficult jobs of the artist is letting go. I mean, you're only an artist when you're painting. Do, do you understand when you're working? I mean, painting, doing whatever you do. But like, when I'm in the studio working, that's when I am being an artist. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I have to let them free. So these are my babies. I do. Okay, you're you're yeah. finished. I'm not gonna touch you anymore. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna put any more details or anything. I'm not. And when I put that on the wall, I am creating a separation. I am not that. That is that. And I am here. This is me. You and see you what I mean? Going. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean. In my own art practice, personally, I am interested in, on knowing more about everything, you know, and and most of those questions are brought to me through the making of things because you make mistakes, because you want to do this and it's difficult. So you think, oh, you know, you need to figure out how to use a lot of materials you don't actually want to use, but you need to figure them out for their purposes. You know, it's, it's like a learning process. I think um, 
a non-ending one. Yeah, -ending yeah, one. It, it's evolving. It's like life itself. This is it keeps going and going. When I die, there's still gonna be art. Before me, there was art. You know, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think we, I think we kind of covered quite well the definition of art from so many perspectives. <laughs> Hopefully, who's who's ever listening to this, you know, caught the the, the perfect definition uh, to I, them. I, you know, it, it, um, they don't get scared of art. Art is like the easiest thing, actually, if you just relax. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. How can how how dare you ask human being to relax? No, that's Please not. Gonna... Relax and enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah. We're always panicking about something that we don't understand. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's move to to something else. Since you're okay. you're Sudanese and you're based in Spain, and somehow somehow for some reason we didn't get the chance to meet actually. I know, man. Like yeah. you're literally in Madrid, right? Yeah. You're... Okay, we have to meet. No, much yeah, soon. That's, very soon. Very soon. Very soon. That's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Since you are you're, you're like you're living a lot of your life outside Sudan, but still, like the the, the you know, Sudan still like lives within you. Like it's uh, <laughs> you represent you represent Sudan in your art and your work, and it's always out there in your projects. I I do believe, of course, since I'm living kind of the same uh, situation, it's a bit difficult, you know, to be okay. belong to a place and not live there and live somewhere else and try to adapt, and all of that. I think is a problem plus being an artist. So you always kind of, you know, have these ideas that has to be presented all the time with all these problems going on. So how difficult it is for you being an artist living away from Sudan? I mean, it's a com composed question, I think. Being part of the diaspora, like I said, the art and the artist, right? So the artist, my job is to make art, whatever I am, you know? That's mm -hmm. like when I was in Zanzibar, I was making art when I was in, Italy, I was making art. Sudan, I was making art. Art is what I'm going to do. Now, the person who's making the art, yes, I have a, a clear identity crisis. I've had it for years. I, I am not ashamed to say that. It's, it's not a crisis like oh, I'm dying in my crisis. No, it's, like it's an actual dilemma crisis. I need to figure it out. I need to sort yeah, you, it out. You're not alone in this, basically. <laughs> yeah, no, but this, this is the thing. I didn't even know for a while that the word diaspora existed. Okay, so when that word came through, I was like, Everything is okay. There's more yeah. people like me out there. You joined the forget club, it. basically. <laughs> yeah, like, forget it. I'm not losing my mind because I want to be, you know, considered by both countries where I am from, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Um, so it's, it's actually, let me give you another definition for art real quickly. Art is language, you know? Art is communication. It's one of the, the tubes of communication. Um, and... Uh, and actually, it's probably the best place for someone in the diaspora to express themselves. How so? Because it, you're, you, you can talk about anything there. You can talk about being black, being white, being anything, you're racism. You can talk about anything. And you're doing it visually. So you're speaking to the people, you know what I mean, um, about this problem you know that you are facing this. I wouldn't call it a problem it's a, because it's a I've dilemma. never been anything oh, else. I, I, I don't call it, I don't think it's, I think there are two lives, my life and the life of everybody else, okay? So mm -hmm. my life, I'm used to being half black, half white, Spanish, Sudanese, mm, traveling around the world. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged for that, actually. My diaspora, my being part of the diaspora, my having uh, a mixed heritage, or this is actually fruitful and amazing for me. This is the best thing that, the reason why Dara is cool is because she's, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From the diaspora from Sudan. Yeah, I'm not cool because I'm Spanish. I'm cool because I'm Sudanese. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm yeah. serious. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about I, I have never been I have never been considered a, a Spanish artist in my life. No one has called me, hey, we need a Spanish artist like you. No. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's like, hey, we need a black artist, we need a African artist, we need you know, so that's maybe my problem that all the questions that I have about my diaspora are not from society are not my questions. They're the questions that they are asking me that I am finding it hard to relate to because you have to relate to the piece of the, 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 mm, the mind of the other who isn't of the diaspora, who mm. doesn't speak multiple languages, who hasn't eaten yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the food you have eaten. So, you know, I have been struggling with this since 2006 since I moved to Europe, basically, because I came from Sudan, man. I like, I grew up in Sudan, you know, and I'm, I knew I was European, but I was 
totally African in a way. You know, I was chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not even African. I was Sudanese, Sudanese. You know, I was yeah. all day with my ginger, my garep, eating my stuff. You know, just relaxing. Yeah. You know, and, and then all of a sudden, I understood also the whole blackness thing. I was black for a long time, not knowing that being black was was such a big deal. You know what I mean? And again, I was never fully black in Sudan. Like, halabia, halabia. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's yeah. another thing. Like, yeah, in, in Sudan, you're actually white. And but people may, maybe don't know this, but like people make fun of you if you have a light skin in Sudan. You know, you, uh, uh, and your mom, mm. if you have things like, um, um, like yeah. da, 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 you know, and, oh, yeah, mean, it's, yeah. it's an insult, actually. <laughs> it's like, how yeah, you, know, all this? you know, like, this is what I'm saying, though. But, like, Actually, I think being part of the diaspora is fruitful because it's being part of, uh, if you're, uh, okay. So also I have learned that there's people of the diaspora who do not identify with uh, both of their identities, let's say, or maybe only one. Do you see what I mean? Like, like you can be Sudanese and never have been to Sudan. You know what I mean? So so this is, this is why it's interesting because the questions are headed towards me and then my question becomes, hmm, but then, hmm, but what about, hmm, what if, Mm, so I'm no longer even questioning my diaspora. I'm questioning the feeling of diaspora. How us, you, me, how we all feel and why we're feeling this way and who, who is creating these emotions in us, in us yeah. or, or, or what is, you know? So actually part of my art is trying to represent Sudan because I feel Sudan needs representation, but it needs positive representation. You know what I mean? So this yeah. is like my, my, my job as a Sudanese, not as an artist. So then you should go out there and say, you know what, Sudan is a shit and we're going to make it even better soon and like everything's going to be great, you know, but, um, but we have to be realistic also in terms of exploring and as at the diaspora, I am not only Sudan either, you see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and those are my tools. My tools are to use the things that I have as a privilege for not being Sudanese to you know, open a door for the Sudanese in me to enjoy that privilege also. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can, I can actually feel that. It's, you know, talking about being, uh, you know, in the diaspora or third culture kid or whatever you want to define it, how you want to define it. I, it, take, it took me a while personally to, to, you know, to enjoy the benefits of this rather yeah, than just complaining about it. Everyone sees the differences first. Everybody. All yeah. the time. You That's the easy thing to spot, to spot out is the differences, is the yeah. unique thing, you know. It, it, took, it took me a while personally, but I think at the end I learned that I, I have a different perspective from like any regular local person, wherever I go. It's like they've always been in that place, stuck in that life, but I've always I mean, been jumping from yeah. here to there. So I have this, you know, kind of like step back kind of seat where I see things from a bigger perspective. I start to learn about this, learn about myself along the way. So uh, that's, that take exactly. advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you know what it is? You know, I learned a very important lesson last year, um, 2019. I learned that really, really and truly, you cannot expect yourself of other people. And every time you're disappointed by a person, it's because of your own ideologies. Okay? So mm. I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that the disappointment is caused by your expectations that are built up by your ideologies that are not like necessarily true <laughs> because you don't leave your country or just be, if you don't leave your country ever, are you stupid? No. Why? Because you left the country and you traveled, you're better. No. no. Why? Yeah. You know, so you went to uni. So we went to uni and we think we're smart. Well, actually, a lot of people go to uni. They're fucking idiots. You know what I mean? So. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that I think we have a lot of expectations of others to understand who we are, but we don't even have the time to understand the others. Do you see what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead of that, we need to focus, rearrange the energy again, and be like, you know, I don't like the word energy, but understand it in this, in this. But like that, all that emphasis you put on the other person at understanding you, do you understand you? If you understand you, do your thing, man. Just do yeah, your thing. Yeah. And in hopes the other person will understand. No, in hopes that you will understand yourself. And use yourself better like as a as a being you know in, in whatever that one matters actually that one matters is like being yeah. the best version of yourself it does not matter if people really understand you no. or appreciate that's not that's not the problem i just think you know i used to think i'm like oh this close to people that they don't know anything I'm like nah khalas dara. I said, and I used, this is how yeah. i talk to myself all the time i'm like khalas dara. they don't know anything but you know everything Mashallah, yeah, yeah. Mashallah, like, yeah. <laughs> take several seats and relax you know it's like 
why like this is the same thing with artists like i am an artist i go around i have friends they're not artists not all my friends are artists of course the majority of my friends are not artists <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but it's not because i'm looking for friends that are not artists it's because i'm also again yeah, i am a person and as a person a lot of times your identity plays a big part and that's when you are a stranger but between friends i i don't think your identity takes as much part as your personality you see what i mean mm. and now everybody no matter where you're from sh should be kind of you know nice and humble and sweet right should, like should be so sometimes the thing is that we realize as members of the diaspora just like all people who are not white okay feel mm. that when you are in a white man's country people look at you and people judge you and, be, and that is true that is happening and it's going to happen so it's like let's just Live you know it. let's just yeah. focus yeah let's just focus on what we can do about it efficiently you yeah. know yeah, of yeah, course yeah, we're yeah. gonna get and of course we're gonna question ourselves over and over again based on this but you know question yourself effectively you know don't, don't attack yourself like you're being attacked that's yeah. that's my advice in a way to people in the diaspora <laughs> you know yeah 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 i know i know i know i'm aware of this being sometimes like the only black in in uh, in a very white territory let's call it and you forget and then you realize right don't you sometimes you're with people and you look around and you're like Oh yeah, actually, I think I look different. You know, I look like yeah. this. But then, okay, I've been allowed in. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it's. I mean, it, it should be something. Either rather than judging people and also being mad because people judge you while you do the same, just be yourself. You know, adapt. And uh, if somebody asks you questions of that stuff they're not aware of, explain it simply. But like, we are always in this. You know, like our minds are we always like easily. we get offended easily. But listen, I think that if you wanna. If someone insults you, you have two choices, man, or three even. One, you can ignore it. Second, you can respond. And third, you can teach them. And the last one is the long one, but the last one should be the most e efficient one. If someone is annoying in the street one day that says something to you, you go to hi, sorry, can you sit? Can we have a seat, please? We need to talk because you just said this to me and it's clearly racist. Ah! Like, okay, see, the way you're reacting towards me right now proves that you do not understand that I am talking to you. But you see what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, there are certain points, I mean, are we going to fight to let everybody know what they're doing wrong, you know, or, or only the things that really affect us personally, you know, I mean, a reaction, a proper reaction yeah, about well, everything, not only about, you know, personal attacks. Well, speaking, speaking of reaction in your art, is there a piece of work that you've done that was a reaction to something happened to you ever, or like they're always abstract? Situation. Or, yeah, situation, something personal happened and then you translate it yeah. into this piece of art. I used to do a lot of uh, illustration drawings and stuff, Zaman. So at the beginning, I think I was in college at the time. So when I moved to England, okay, I had a culture, sh culture shock. Like pe people literally said to me, uh, you're fresh off the boat, aren't you? And I, like, it, listen, it doesn't matter if you're born in Spain, if you have a Spanish passport, you know, like it, all those things didn't matter at all in England. When I got there, I was like, whoa, 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 what's happening? What, yeah. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> and all the questions and all the people and I could see people reacting to people and and like a lot of weird things were happening to me and I didn't know how to express them. So I did like a lot of comic strips. I have no idea where these things are right now. Like they're probably lost. Mm. I remember one time I went into the tube and there was maybe like a thousand people in the tube, like always. And, uh, and I sat on a on, 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 the, on the tube and uh, my, my arm, I put it on the, on the armrest and this other woman, she, she, hers was here. So I put mine on the armrest like this and I, I, I touched her. Okay. Oh, God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> okay. I didn't even realize I touched her. Okay. Because I just sat down. I just sat down, I took my bag off, sat down and, you know, and I had my headphones on. All right. And there was like, excuse me, like, oh my God, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I, I was like, what, what happened? T -t 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 took my headphones off, looked around. I'm like, are you okay? What's going on? I thought something happened, you know? Yeah. It's like, what's going on? You touched me, pay attention, like pay attention to that. And I'm, I'm like, I saw her, I was like, I, 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 touch, I touched, I touched, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I touched you. I touched you in the tube, like, 
you know, like everybody's touching, my, my leg is touching this person, everybody's touching, it's not that happening, right? So at that moment, I was like, I was in shock because I've never had a situation like this and everybody was looking at me and it looked like I had hurt this woman and she was really upset and she was right next to me and she was screaming. So I just, uh, what I did, uh, I, was, I was a bit in shock. I just put my headphones back on mm -hmm. and I put the music louder. Like I'm not gonna even ask if this madness, you know, like I thought you were a crazy woman. So that I drew, I drew a whole comic about how you go in and, and you're just doing your normal life, doing your things and you touch a person in the tube and the reaction is so extreme, you know, it's like, Jesus. But anyway, that's because actual, actual scenarios in life, what I do is that I write them down. I write all the time. I write uh, like the things that happen. You know the things that I don't answer, the things where I don't say, you know what, fuck you. Like those things that I don't say, I I write them down. Just okay. so I say them, you know, I get them off my chest onto yeah. paper and not create more trouble. <laughs> so, so you try not to create art from, from the stuff that annoys you. You just write no, them down yeah. to get them out of your system, basically. Listen, there are there is some pieces of mind that talk about racism. But it, it, it's again, it's not about the net. I don't, I'm not saying about the positive side of racism. I'm just saying that it's not, it's not negative. It's not positive. It's kind of like, it's the fact. Racism exists, right? And, and, and in my work, when I portray it, I'm obviously at the side of the black people. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm saying. But this is a choice made by my existence here. All right? Like, I know there's a lot of black people who do not have a single necessity to express their blackness. All right? Mm -hmm. But me, because it's many times taken away from me, and many times it's given to me as a negative thing, I have to interpret it as I see it. You see what I mean? And I see my blackness as a fact, right? If we want to talk about blackness beyond fact, then uh, that's a conversation we need to have personally. Mm -hmm. But my work, for example, I did have a piece that is said, I had all these colors and then he had like all these men um, facing left and one of the men's faces was black only black, but everybody else was like so many colors and there was like colors everywhere flying in and out. And the title of the piece is what drives you to think of the racist terms that I'm trying to eliminate, which was they only see black. You see what I mean? So amongst all these beauty and all these amazing things and all these colors, they only see black. So it's kind of like, I'm letting you know that they only see black, so you relax. It's not your problem, there is more. It's just that not everybody can see it. Yeah, you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think maybe artists or also other professions always, you know, uh, express whatever they feel and whatever they go through th through their uh, work. And I think that's uh, I think that's that's an amazing thing because it's not easy sometimes to explain what you go through. Not easy to to express your feelings through just words. So you need a different sort of way of communicating them. And art art, art is a Art is perfect. Art, for that. music, music does the same. Sometimes you're fine and you listen to a song that you've never heard before and you mm -hmm. start tearing up and, and feeling all emotional, but you're not even saddened. You're just you're not even saddened by the lyrics. It's just the emotion that the tones, those tones, those sounds, what they're doing to your ear. That happens with colors in your eyes, that happens with taste in your mouth, with smells in your nose. You see what I mean? So with touching something, the texture, looking at the texture and not touching it, that's so mm, mm. You know, like, yeah. so tempting, so, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you see something, you need to touch it to see how it feels. Why? Why is that need? That, that is... I don't know, connecting the other sense maybe could help, you know, exp experiencing this better. I don't know. It will communicate something more. It, it's just, it's the senses are allowing you to communicate more things. So the, the paintings, I think that's what you said about the emotions that we're feeling. That's something that I usually also use, like, to explain sometimes, like, why? I use art as, uh, as painting as opposed to other mediums. For me, I'm trying to let the painting paint itself. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's going to tell me what it needs. It's going to tell me what, you know, so the intention of painting is mine, you know, but I'm trying to, to not think, to kind of let it free, let it, let it uh, grow in front of me. You see what I mean? So, so that I can learn, like, so I can have the conversation. So I'm not the only one talking, saying, okay, this must go here, this must go here. Yeah. you know yeah i think we can clearly see that in your work i mean uh, of course for me like the the only way to see your work is uh your store the store you have uh, online or the 
Instagram page. Now, since we mentioned this, I want to talk about the impact of uh, social media on artists. Of course, we cannot really avoid uh, how social media being this big, like never before the, this, this year for sure because of social distancing. But it's been out there for the last couple of years. Uh, some people, like some artists still rely on, uh, you know, exhibitions and art galleries. And some of them are just doing virtual work. So I want to know from, from your perspective, was social media a good tool, good platform to express yourself or it wasn't? Was it like all about you, the artist, or was it about the oh, artwork? Oh, okay, I'm going to be honest. Go ahead. Here. Okay? Fuck social media. That's what I'm going to say, number one. <laughs> wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Sorry for the podcast, okay? Mm. Sorry that you had to hear that. But secondly... Um, it is a tool, like you said. Okay, that's why I'm using it. I think it's a, it's a tool, it's a tool. But, uh, you know, like for millennia, artists have existed without Instagram. So Instagram actually, I don't know. I think, I think a better tool is a, tooth, uh, a, a brush, a painting brush than Instagram mm -hmm. for, paint, for artists. I mean, do you know what I mean? Um, yes, okay. What we have found is that now everybody wants to do everything on a screen, right? Like they don't want to like, Let's forget about Corona, okay? Let's just talk in general. I wish I can. I wish in general, I can about it. <laughs> oh, forget it. It's, it's just, it's, 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 an, it's the norm now. It's halas. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is normality. And Mohem, so, um, so social media is supposed to be social, right? It's supposed to be somewhere where you interact and you talk and you respond and, and you share and you look and you find, all right? So that's why it's nice for artists, because if you need to be found, you might be found. By the way, you're probably not. Okay, this is what I mean. Like, let's, expectations, okay? Let's, let's just, this is the problem with social media. Social media for artists, if you're a young artist, if you started, it's like the worst place you can be in, in my opinion. Like the worst place you can inhabit, because you don't need to, you need to work, man. You need to work. You need to work. You need to figure out what the fuck you're doing. And you need to create bodies of, a whole entire body of work, I think, in order to enter with strength. All right? It's a very, very competitive world. Okay? And it's full of fakes, which are going to give you a very fake idea of how art actually works. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, I can rent a studio space tomorrow or a nice big white room and put my paintings there and take photos do you see what i mean that's not what we think happens but that happens all right a lot of people have a lot of money and other jobs you know art is just their hobby you know so you may compare yourself to people who are not in your career line you know and they might have some even better profiles than anybody you could even think of all right so um also Art curators, they're not going on Instagram looking for people. Come on, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's we need the, to... I think it's the easiest way now. Like, it's easier than, you know, uh, finding, uh, like, true, like, hardcore artists. The easier way is just, like, search for a hashtag or... You mean for the like... public? You mean for the general public? You mean the people who are not going to buy your work, basically? But, I mean, okay, but I think you can you can get some, some, some people who buy your work through By the way, Instagram. I for the general public. I'm just saying that they're not the first ones so like we think oh my god i have seven i have eight thousand followers but i do not have eight thousand euros do you know what i mean i only have mm -hmm. one euro for each follower so like this is what i'm saying it's very it's very misleading uh, the social media in terms of art i'm gonna switch on the light i think is that better is that too much uh can you move it around uh, or... uh, yep yep yeah. the previous position there we go yeah i look a bit like dun 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 like this <laughs> I think that's okay. yeah. Okay, so um, you're saying it's a, it's a misleading. Yes, I it's misleading. I struggled a lot with it. I I kept on like listen. I, first of all, when I first got into Instagram, I wasn't even I didn't even know what a hashtag was. Okay, I was just mm -hmm. like put a picture of something here, four likes. I was like yeah, whatever. Like it didn't matter. I was just like a diary of uh, like Instagram has changed, has evolved a lot. Okay, it has, like it has, yeah. stories and I don't know what and lives and all these things. These things are, are like we talk about them like they're normal, but they only just happened in the last five years max, you know? Yeah. Um, so 
um, when I first started, I didn't pay it any mind. And then everyone's like, oh my God, you must have your Instagram Dara, man. Like, you, you can't just put posts like this. You have to put like a title and some hashtag. Like people started telling me, Dara, you need to use Instagram. And I'm like, oh, but I don't have the time. I don't have time. I have to, you know, I was studying, I was working, I, I was partying, I, I was living yeah. my life. Like, what Instagram? What? I don't have time. I don't even have Facebook. I thought, like, what? <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of social media in general. Okay, um, I, I just think it's very misleading. I feel like I, I rather see people and talk to people and. And yeah, that. that's 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 the thing. That's the thing. I think yeah, maybe the again we if we go go back to your answer previously when you said the expectation and versus the reality. Maybe like we 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 understand the idea of social media not in the best way, and then we interpret it like in the worst way possible. Then we don't take advantage of this tool. I do believe it's a great tool. I do. Yes, but, yes, yes, but but it's but being used of course in the worst way possible, and maybe an artist as you are impacted by this, you know, because people no, compare. don't have Instagram. That's the truth, you know? And if they have Instagram, they're not running it. Yeah, you see yeah, what I mean? Teams or... So it's not even something you need to know or do be good at because it's not your job. Do you see what I mean? But yeah, if you but make it's, it... It's the job, reality right now. It's, that's what's happening right now, especially like yes, the US as an example. Giving, listen, we're giving this... This is my big problem, okay? So... um. Okay, two things. One, uh, when I first started and I started seeing all these women artists, for example, who were literally like mm, half naked in front of their paintings, all right? I think like, hmm, mm, ah, you know? Yeah. I got stressy because I thought, girl, you're a beautiful girl. Well, then you just, you know, make yourself beautiful, some sexy picture in front of your art and think like hell to the no. Because again, is that, are we talking about the art or are we talking about the artist? Now, the same conversation I had with you before is what is misleading online all the time. All right, like people, people pay for likes. People pay for these things. People pay to be in exhibitions. People pay to sell the, their work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, second thing, my biggest problem with Instagram, for example, is the value people are giving it. Like, if tomorrow Instagram died, what happens? We all die. That's a very good question. That's an important it's question. It's the end of the fucking world. This is what I'm saying. And the reason why I got to this point is because I realized that part of the stress in my life wasn't because I wasn't an artist or I wasn't proud of myself or I wasn't good or I wasn't working. It was because of the flipping Instagram, because I'm looking at what other people are doing. Who cares what other people are doing if you're doing what you got to be doing, man? Yeah, it's a good yeah. tool to research. For example, I go in here, I'm like, okay, like the strand, everybody wants this type of work. Okay, definitely not doing that. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm, yeah. this is what I mean? Like, I'm like, okay, so what is this all about? I go on Instagram, I'm like, okay, so whatever, you know? But like, it's like when you wanna, if I wanna search for an artist, I don't go on their Instagram. I instantly go to their website or look for them on Google or go somewhere else to see the real deal. You see what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm screaming a little bit because it really stresses me because I feel like uh, especially young people are putting so much emphasis on it. It's almost like... That's the point. That is the point. I think the young generation, maybe like me and you or like whoever is like listening to this, if they haven't used uh, social media because it's recent actually in, I don't know, last 15 years or something, we adapt to it. Maybe we know how to use it or maybe we don't, but it's not the circle or like the core of our life. You know, it's just a tool. But somebody who's, I don't know, 14, 13 years old, it is the thing, you know, they don't know anything but this tool. So probably this generation is going to be raised on trends, on, 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 on filters, on Have hashtags. you seen 13 years old? 13 year olds, what they're doing right now? 13 year olds. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? With the no. TikTok and the thing and the, everybody's dancing. Like, what is this? What, what's happening? How can art and that be in the same place? This is what I'm saying. How can it's, how a can very, art... it's a very vague, big platform that includes everything, you know? So then it, if it includes everything, what does it include? Nothing. It only includes that, which generates more likes, which generates more money for Instagram. Finish. Yeah, Finish. Yeah, basically, basically, that's and, and, and it. Why, like, uh, okay, so, the, okay, so you must have social media in order to be seen. You must know how to use it in order to make the, a good use of this tool so that you don't get yourself canceled. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> and you need, canceled. yeah, because I feel like a lot of people are mixing their private lives with their art lives also. So a lot of, a lot of artists are 
you know, talking about painting one day and then talking about how much they hate their next door neighbor. And it's okay because people want to know about the artist, but then a lot of times people like the artist more than the art, but they support the art because they like the artist. So it's become misleading also in terms of the critique and the information you can get towards understanding your own work as well. You see what I mean? Like get a person to sit down and look at your work and talk to you. That's way more difficult than someone giving you a heart or not saying anything at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's harder, but I think I think it, this kind of conversation needs some time to to understand because, like, since social media is becoming so big, we cannot really like we cannot really understand where is this taking us, how bad or good it is. But for the moment, let's just take advantage of it in the best way possible. Psychologically, though, it's fucking with a lot of people, though. You know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's another topic. Like, I don't know, have you seen uh, Social Dilemma? But the artists are the most sensitive people on earth, man. Like, you tell an artist this is shit, and they die, or you give them four likes instead of four hundred, and then they see somebody else getting one thousand, and they commit suicide, man. This is what I'm saying, like, because they put their entire being in a piece of paper, and then they get barely anything when they again expectations. They're yeah. expecting more, so it's actually not. It's not, it won't help you to get to go online if you don't know how to use it because it's going to cost you trouble and then you're going to think about that instead of making yeah. art. See? Yeah, yeah, make a real art. Yeah, yeah, I think that also like this idea deserves a, a piece of art, you know, the, the social media dilemma or like, like... The artists definitely are doing well and they're using the platform, the actual platform. So they're using the actual format the platform is allowing and they're regenerating it. What I mean by this is that they're taking the, the format, the limited format that Instagram gives you, and they're making really cool things in that limited format. And it, I could never do something like that without a team. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But so I think I think the digital, the photography, movie scene, for example, I think for they are doing much better in that. Um, in as, uh, having Instagram as their observant, let's say, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's a, it's a big, big topic. I mean, whenever I open the social media topic with anybody, it's always a big thing. But uh, I want to uh, kind of finalize the, the amazing talk that I've been having with you here with, uh, I don't know, kind of a conclusion about art, about you, Dar, and also about Sudan. So you've been you've been working very hard lately, also like in, in so many pieces. And the, there was the Sudan retold uh, last year. And... And now also with the pandemic and all of these kind of shape you even like for the next year. So what, what's going to happen for, for Dar and Art in 2021? Oh my God. So 2020 delayed a few things that I have to still do. Yeah, well, you have two weeks. <laughs> yeah, no. So no, I start, I mean, okay. So from the beginning of the year, my plan was to go into large scale work. Okay. Because I've always worked in very mana like small, like manageable sizes. And the thing was like, oh, you need to make bigger, bigger pieces because your, your creation is asking for this. So um, I had no money, no job, nothing for an entire year. And I just recently sold a couple of paintings, small ones. I mean, not small, like medium size. And uh, those have allowed me to finally buy the materials I was looking for. So I bought some, a lot of uh, big papers and canvas and and rolls of paper and thing and the idea is to just go huge like just like break it like i don't even care if they buy it they don't buy it i have to make it like i need to mm -hmm. you know um so in conclusion art wise painting drawing wise we're going we're going large all right we're going big um nice in terms of um what did you say like a uh, conclusion of the whole thing of the art and that i think art is for everybody i think everybody should find some time to enjoy a little bit of art every day and i don't know what that means <laughs> i think everybody needs to figure that out yeah. you know um i think that people should walk into galleries with more intent like with more mm, respect for themselves you know because the gallery needs you to go in there remember you are this is all for you Art is for the people, you know? Um, don't question art in basis of its value because that's economics. <laughs> yeah, That's something else, you know? And, and be free, man, enjoy yourselves, man. And artists, artists out there, I need 
I need everybody to just relax with social media and get to real life stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I hope this message actually gets through the idea of relaxing a little bit, you know, just enjoying whatever piece of art you have at your house, something you bought yourself or just found there, just enjoy it. You can even make something. It doesn't matter. No one's watching. Like, I think a lot of people feel like they have to show the art that they make. That's why mm -hmm. they're so worried. I don't, you guys haven't seen like not even half of my work, you know, not at all. Yeah. So yeah, just be free. We allow, allow yourself to make art. I think give yourself permission. <laughs> Yeah, we, I mean, everybody can, can be creative and artistic in their own small uh, room or whatever, like comes in their head, they can present it in a very nice way. That could be, as we talked about today, like paintings, it could be uh, music, it could be uh, movies, stories, uh, your voice, whatever you can use just to be creative so you don't lock yourself and all your ideas in very small places and then you explode, you know, <laughs> with everything mm -hmm. that's happening in the world right now. Look, look how good everybody um, or how quickly everybody resolved to the arts as soon as we had the pandemic. Because you had time and all the time had to be filled and all that time had to be filled with something that would fill your mind and make you feel like you're doing something, you know, because the human, if it doesn't do anything, it becomes obsolete almost like uh, non-existent. You know, that's another problem we have <laughs> as humans. We believe we must be active at all times. <laughs> So many problems, so many problems. Yeah, of course, at the pandemic, everybody relied on an artist, either, you know, uh, uh, like an actor or somebody who does comedy shows, whatever, just to fill their times. We all relate on, on, on artists and they're the least paid people, least respected, oh, yeah. respected people. Yeah, we, we weren't getting paid before the pandemic, so I don't know what people are talking <laughs> about now. Uh, you know, like, I was like yeah. guys, oh, what, you didn't get paid for a month? Oh, my God. The drama. <laughs> yeah, the horror, basically. <laughs> yeah. <been> years. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I, I think yeah, art just like a word consists of three letters, wow. but it includes so much, and I don't think we can we will be able to cover even half of that in just this conversation. Oh, but it's have, a, yeah, we could have a podcast just on on art, just the word art, just like blah 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 yeah, forever. We could do that. We could do that. But I think we have reached the end of uh, this episode. Yeah. Uh, with you there as the first uh, guest on uh, Sudanese Creators on Hassan Talks podcast. So I appreciate you being a part of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me. I hope I've been positive enough. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were. You could be worse, I know. <laughs> you know. And I hope everybody's enjoying this uh, conversation. If you are watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, our podcast, so many platforms. It's going to be coming out and so enjoy the series enjoy the rest of the episodes of hassan talk podcast it's out there and this is me your host hassan follow stay tuned for the coming episode peace out <laughs>